Hi everyone, today we're going to look at stem cells and then we're going to end with some exam questions. Okay, so firstly, what are stem cells? So stem cells are undifferentiated cells and what that means is that they don't have the features that some cells have to carry out a function. So they're basically like blank scrabble pieces where they don't have a particular function yet, they can acquire features that will help them carry out a function but they don't yet have specialised features in order to do this. Um, and animals lose the ability to differentiate at an early stage so for us this is when we're embryos and we're growing but when we're born we don't have the, the ability to differentiate so we can't grow the limbs back but we do still have stem cells like in places like our bone marrow which I'll talk about later. Uh, plant cells don't ever lose the ability to differen differentiate so that means that if we do cut off a flower or the stalk they do have the potential to grow that back. And as I've said they're mainly used for repairing or replacing nothing major like um, growing back whole new limbs. Okay, so now we're going to look at the differences between embryonic and adult stem cells. This is quite a, a common exam question where they'll probably say compare the two. So I think it's important that you learn this. So embryonic, found in early human embryos, quite easy to remember, embryos, embryonic. Um, whereas in adult stem cells, you'll find this in um, anyone that isn't a fetus. So found in the brain bone marrow, skin and other tissues but when we new normally harvest it we normally get it from the bone marrow a common treatment for leukaemia is uh, bone marrow transplants because they've lost so many healthy red blood cells uh, sorry white blood cells can turn into any kind of cell so can differentiate into any kind of cell so can acquire any different subcellular features to carry out different functions However, this has um, a limited amount that it can turn, to, turn into, which is a negative of adult stem cells. And they can both be grown to produce clones, which is a slim similarity. Okay, so it's quite useful to learn these two uses. I know I've mentioned leukaemia before, but we can use them for diabetes, um, insulin producing cells, some people with diabetes don't have the uh, the cells required that produce insulin and that can be an effective treatment for diabetes although they are still quite new at the moment and for par paralysis so I just learned these two to be fair it's normally like I've seen a multiple choice question before and you just have to recognise these two words okay so you don't have to know too much in depth about this but I think it is useful. So therapeutic cloning, an embryo could be made to have the same genetic information as a patient. The stem cell produced would have the same DNA as the patient therefore would not be rejected by the body. And a risk is that they may be contaminated when grown in the lab with a virus which could make the patient sicker, sicker which is a quite a big disadvantage. Okay, so there's quite a lot of controversy around using stem cells, mainly because they're embryonic, because the ones that we use, they don't, they don't mature into adults. Once we use them, that's potentially killing a life. So we're just going to discuss that now. So some people feel as though it's immoral to use human embryos in research. This is because each embryo is a potential human life. Others think that curing patients who already exist and who are suffering are more important. Now the thing is, when you're discussing things like this, you're not required to provide your opinion, but it is good if it's in a, an evaluation question, which we're going to go over, to provide other points of view, because it shows you like your weighing skills, you can have different points of view. However, embryos that are used are usually unwanted ones for, from the fertility clinics which would be destroyed so these these would be um, disposed of anyway and the, the 
Uh, fertility clinics usually produce quite a lot of them, which get thrown away. Those protesting against the use of embryonic stem cells want scientists to concentrate on other sources of stem cells, so that might be um, adult stem cells, which we just discussed. Stem cell research is legal in the UK as long as strict guidelines are followed. And as I said, it's important for evaluative questions. Okay, so this is we're now talking about plants. We've just discovered humans, now we're talking about plants. Stem cells are found in the merry stems of plants. This is kind of like the end of like roots, stuff like that. The merry stem has potential to differ differentiate throughout its life, it doesn't lose it. When, it was a, when it's a small plant or anything like we do. Stem cells can be used to produce clones of plants cheaply and rapidly. Can be used to grow more plants of rare species. And can also be used to grow crops with desired characteristics like disease resistance. You could also have drought resistance, stuff like that. So I'd learn these two examples. Might, might come up in the question. Okay, so this is quite an important part because a lot of teachers tend to miss this out. So usually between four and six marks, sometimes four markers, sometimes six markers. And if it asks you like, if it was on embryonic and adult, it would have to be positives and negatives for each point. So that'd be positives and negatives for embryonic, then positives and negatives for adult stem cells. You can write in full sentences or bullet points, you don't have to write an essay style note, you don't have to write an intro. I think this is quite important, you have to write a conclusion showing your evaluative skills, even if you do put positive and negatives. It's usually about only one point, but I think that one point is, ne um, is worth it if it's a six marker. Okay, so we're going to have a go at this. It gives you some information. And it says, evaluate the use of stem cells from embryos or from adult bone marrow for treating human diseases. You should give a conclusion to evaluation. See, it says it gives it the... Okay, pause the video. Have a go at this. Okay, so you, you can quite clearly see why it's important to give pros and cons for each one. It literally gives the headings and underneath. It normally doesn't say it like this, but that ju it, it, ju it just demonstrates here. And then underneath it, it just, I just, it just cropped off. Um, it says conclusion, and it literally just says a reason conclusion from the evidence. So it could be anything really. It's quite, that the conclusion is quite flexible. Um, I won't say that you have to include every point, maybe like one or two from each section. Um, but we've gone over all of these. Some you can even think of that I haven't gone over. So quick recovery, safe, um, many available, stuff like that. I think it's worth learning that answer. Okay, so more questions here. I'd pause the video now, have a go at these. Okay, so answers. Stem cells can differentiate or, or are in undifferentiated, unspecialised, can form blood vessel cells slash brain cells. And here, the ethical argument that I talked about, no risk of damage to embryo or adult can give consent for removal of cells. So there's just the idea of, because the, the embryo isn't conscious yet, they can't make that decision, so is it so some people think it might be immoral to destroy that because they haven't consented to it. Um, so yeah, that's the end of the video now. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll be uploading videos more frequently now that I've got time. Um, hope you enjoyed. Leave a like and subscribe. Thank you.